At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of February 27th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Amphrey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Yeah. Diaz. Drum. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Jonai. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lanceman, Lander, Levin, Levine, here, Lewis, here, Mizell, Menchaca, Miller, present, Moya, Perkins, Powers, Reynoso, Richards, Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rose. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Kalos. Here. Ulrich. Here and on time, just for the record. Gotta be once a year there. Balone. <laughs> Here. Balone. Here again. <laughs> Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Matteo. Cumbo. Present. Speaker Johnson. We have a quorum, and we will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Pastor Diesel Sanyo Joseph, the spiritual leader of Iglesia de Dios de la Profecia, Williamsburg, located at 333 Union Avenue in Brooklyn. Please rise. Dios le bendiga. Doy gracias a Dios por esta linda oportunidad la cual se me concede en este día con el propósito de elevar la oración de bendición y de dirección de Dios para esta magna asamblea. Gracias a Dios y a los organizadores de este evento que me han invitado con este fin. Mi nombre es Diesel Sano Joseph, soy obispo de la Iglesia de Dios de la Profecía por la misericordia de Dios, pastoreo la Iglesia de Dios de la Profecía, ubicada en la 387 Sur 1 Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11211. Allí servimos a la comunidad. Gracias le damos a Dios por esta oportunidad tan hermosa, ya que ustedes han tenido en cuenta la necesidad que hay de buscar la dirección de Dios para que Dios los dirija a cada uno de ustedes que han de tomar decisiones que tienen que ver con el pueblo, que tienen que ver con la gente, los ciudadanos, 
de esta ciudad y posiblemente de otros lugares de este país. Para mí es un honor elevar esta oración de fe, vamos a estar en comunión, nosotros vamos a elevar esta oración de fe clamando al Dios Todopoderoso, el Creador del cielo y de la tierra, el universo, el que tiene poder, Él es que tiene poder para dar sabiduría y entendimiento e inteligencia a los hombres para que puedan discernir realmente entre lo bueno y lo malo y nos pueda iluminar para tomar decisiones correctas que sean la más beneficiosa para la gloria de Dios y para el beneficio de todo y del bien común. Estemos en comunión, podemos elevar nuestra alma al cielo para clamar al que vive y reina para siempre. Dios Todopoderoso, Padre Santo, Dios Grande, Dios Bueno, Dios de Gracia, de Misericordia, vengo a ti, Señor, para darte la gracia por esta magna oportunidad que tú me has dado en este día, con el fin de elevar esta oración de fe en favor de este gran evento que se está llevando a cabo en este lugar, donde se van a tomar decisiones que van a necesitar justicia, equidad y sabiduría de lo alto. Nosotros los hombres, nuestra sabiduría y nuestra capacidad para decidir entre lo bueno y lo malo son limitadas. Por eso clamamos a ti en este día, para que tu Espíritu Santo ilumine a cada funcionario, a cada conferencista, para que todo redunde para gloria y honra tuya. Te damos las gracias en el nombre de Jesús, nombre que es, es sobre todo nombre. Que Dios bendiga a América. Gloria al Señor. Dios le bendiga, Dios le guarde. Amén. Thank you. I'd now like to ask Council Member Rodriguez to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker, also for inviting someone from the Dominican descent. Hoy es un día especial para la comunidad dominicana. Se celebra la independencia nuestra. Somos un millón de personas en la ciudad de Nueva York. Y para nosotros es un gran honor tener un líder religioso dándonos la invocación. It is a great day and thanks the speaker for inviting someone from the Dominican community. Today we celebrate the Dominican Independence Day. There's one million Dominicans in New York City throughout the five world. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader, Pastor Diaz Sano Joseph, here and for being here today and make a motion that the invocation be spread in the full upon the record. Pastor Diaz Sano Joseph was born in San Luis, a city east in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Before spending his life in San Antonio de Guerra, his professional training was as electrical technician and was employed by a local factory while actively involved with his own church. In 1987, he was asked to start a new church in Boca Chica, in the South Isle of Pau, the nation. Shortly thereafter, he was recommended for the pastorship and served in that role for the next 12 years. Pastor Sano immigrated to the United States on January 18, 1987, <coughs> along with his wife and three out of his four children. First arriving in New Jersey in 2007, he was transferred to the Iglesia de Dios la Profecía in Brooklyn, where he is still served. Located in 387 South 1, First Street, in the south side of Willenburg and home to one of the largest population of Latinos in North Brooklyn, La Iglesia de Dios, La Profecia welcomes all who worship in peace. Today, Pastor Sano is humbled by a community that has coalesced around service and God and is proud of his four children and 12 grandchildren, the hen and his wife of 46 years old. Gracias. Que viva la independencia de la República Dominicana. Thank you. Gracias. <clears throat> we will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Lewis. I motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of January 23rd, 2020, be, adopt be adopted as printed. Thank you, Council Member Lewis. We'll now have messages and papers from the mayor. 
M224 Tax Commission appointment. Communication from City, County, and Borough Offices. M224 is referred to rules. Uh, Pre-considered M225 through pre-considered M228, various budget documents. Uh, finance. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups. M229, Sidewalk Cafe. Thank you. At this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on today's land use call-up calendar. This is just on land use call-ups. Yeah, I'm changing. Matteo. I vote yes, and with permission, I'd like to vote yes on all a uh, couple general orders and resolutions. Permission granted. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Ulrich. I vote aye on all and ask for unanimous consent to vote on all the matters on the general order calendar as well. It's just getting used to you. Permission granted. I, uh, yes. <laughs> I vote aye. Thank you. I'll be back. Don't worry. Adams. I vote aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brennan. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinidis. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Jonai. Aye and all. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Manchaka. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Powers. Aye. Lander. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Land use call-ups. I would I. Reynoso, Richards. Uh, I ask uh, unanimous consent to vote for all land use call-up items and all general calendar, general calendar items. Say it again. Oh, I Permission vote granted. Oh, okay, all right, I was waiting. Okay, I vote aye, thank you. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. I am permission to vote aye in all general order. Permission granted. I vote aye in my prayer to the family who lost their child today and all the crimes that unfortunately bring to four the number of children being losing mm -hmm. their life in crisis in the city of New York since December to today. I, that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Gibson. Aye. Torres. I would like to vote I would, I would like to vote yes on all land use call ups and with your permission I would like to vote yes on all couple general orders and resolutions. Yes. Yes, I vote aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Vallone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. At this time, I'd like to call on Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. 
Uh, with your permission, I would like to vote yes on all couple general orders and resolutions. And as you may know, there was another child killed on his way to school today. This is the second death in my district within two days. And I do ask that we all you know, be mindful of that and keep the family in our prayers. Our condolences on behalf of the entire city council, and I know how tragic this must be for the families, but also yes. for you as the leader. And we stand strong and we stand with you. Thank you. Thank you. Permission granted, and today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative and zero negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. A uh, very happy Thursday. Thank you all for being here for today's stated meeting. I want to begin this stated by acknowledging a few momentous incidents since our last stated meeting. If folks could take a seat just while we do this, that would be great. This sadly includes two devastating losses for the NYPD. Detective Paul Federico died by suicide on February 17th. He was 53 years old. Detective Federico served the department for more than 25 years and was a first responder to 9-11. We will forever be grateful for the bravery and courage of Detective Federico. The department also lost Daniel Sheriffs, a retired member of the department, to suicide as well. He served the department for over 20 years and he passed away on February 21st. He was 46 years old. As the department mourns these two losses, my heart goes out to the families of both Detective Federico and Officer Sheriffs. I also want to encourage all members of the police department to seek help for any struggles they are facing. No one should suffer in silence. I'm sad to say that we lost a New York City construction worker in an on-the-job fatality earlier this month. David Johnson died on February 20th in Queens. He was 50 years old, and we have lost too many construction workers on the job here in New York City, and we must continue to work to make that industry safer. And as we do at every stated meeting, I want to remember the lives of those lost to 9-11 related illnesses. FDNY firefighter Daniel Foley passed away after a battle with a 9-11 related cancer he passed away on February 22nd. Firefighter Foley was a 21-year veteran of the FDNY. He spent days in the aftermath of 9-11 searching for his brother, who was a victim of the tragic attacks at the World Trade Center. The heroic acts of Firefighter Foley will never be forgotten, and my heart is with his family and with the department during this difficult time. If we could all stand and let us pause for a moment of silence, for Detective Federico, Officer Sheriffs, David Johnson, and Firefighter Foley. Thank you. Yesterday marked the 27th anniversary of the bombing at the World Trade Center's North Tower basement, which predated the, the September 11th attacks. Six lives were lost that day, and over 1,000 others were injured. And as you remember the lives lost on that fateful day, I want to encourage us to remember that in the greatest city in the world, we are greater united. Yesterday was also the anniversary of the killing of NYPD officer Edward Byrne. The 22-year-old officer was shot in his police vehicle 32 years ago a death that shook New York City to its core. He was guarding the home of an immigrant who was being targeted by gangs. Officer Byrne's legacy will never be forgotten. And yesterday also marked the beginning of Lent. Many New Yorkers commemorated Ash Wednesday, and I would like to wish everyone a very peaceful season of Lent. Pope Francis is urging the faithful to disconnect from their devices for Lent, which I think is great advice. I don't know if I could do it, but it is worth trying. I also want to acknowledge that Davis Winslow, a senior economist in the Finance Division's Revenue Unit, 
is leaving the council after four years to go work at the State Division of Homes and Community Renewal. We are grateful for all the work that you have done, Davis, and we want to wish you good luck in your next uh, part of public service. Are you here? There you are. On Tuesday, the Council held its Black History Month event here in the Council Chambers, where we celebrated the accomplishments of black people throughout our country and our city, and I was honored to join so many of the members here during that celebration. Uh, last, but especially not least, today is Dom the Dominican Republic's Independence Day, and New York is stronger today because of the contributions of Dominicans and Dominican New Yorkers. So to everyone who's celebrating here and abroad, we wish them a very happy Independence Day. Now let's dive into today's legislative, into today's legislative agenda. On on today's stated agenda, the council will vote on the following land use items, 2513-2523 Avenue O rezoning in Councilmember Chaim Deutsch's district, two applications in Councilmember Margaret Chin's district, the Go Broom development, and 503 Broadway. Then there's also Bridge Park South mapping to facilitate the expansion of Bridge Park and the Harlem River Gateway in Councilmember Vanessa Gibson's district. And lastly, a site selection of a new 322 seat primary school in Councilmember Justin Brannon's district. Out of the Finance Committee, the Council will vote on the following items. Proposed introduction number 245B, sponsored by Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, will exempt properties from having their liens sold by the Department of Finance in a tax lien sale if the property received a not-for-profit property tax exemption in the prior two years. Properties that have a pending application or appeal to be granted for the nonprofit property tax exemption will also be considered exempt. This bill will also require the creation of a not-for-profit ombudsperson within DOF and improve notice requirements. And I want to thank from the staff, Rebecca Chasen, Emre Adev, and Stephanie Ruiz for their work on this. The council is also voting on our operating budget as prepared by the council's administrative services division, an expense budget modification, and a transparency resolution. Moving on, the council will be voting on the following piece of legislation. First, we have two very important health resolutions that address sickle cell disease. Sickle, del sickle cell disease disproportionately impacts the black community as well as, the, as well as other communities of color. Despite its severity, there is a lack of funding, education, and research in this field. These resolutions would would increase the public awareness of sickle cell disease and draw attention to the serious and often unmet needs of communities impacted by this disease. Resolution 980 by Councilmember Danique Miller would declare June 19th Sickle Cell Awareness Day, and Resolution Number 335A, sponsored by Danny Drum, would call the, the call for legislation from the state that would establish eight demonstration programs throughout the state and one coordinating center to improve the care of sickle cell disease patients and educate about sickle cell disease. And I want to thank Emily Balkin from the staff for her work on those resolutions. Next, we have an update to the New York City Energy Code. New York City has been a global leader in the fight against climate change, and these updates will make, uh, these updates uh, will make newly constructed or substantially renovated buildings more energy efficient. Proposed introduction number 1816A, sponsored by our Housing Committee Chair, Robert Cornegie, updates the Energy Conservation Code, and I wanna thank uh, Janan Zilka from the staff for her work on that. Next, our next bill is an oversight and investigations piece of legislation that is designed to increase transparency in an area that is desperately needed. Proposed introduction number 1440A, sponsored by Councilor Richie Torres, would ensure that the New York City Department of Investigation and the Special Commissioner of Investigation for the New York City School District to create web applications to track agency cooperation and compliance with investigations and recommendations and an effort to increase transparency. And I want to thank Stephanie Jones from the staff for her work on that bill. Next, we have two pieces of food policy legislation. Proposed introduction number 1654A, sponsored by Councilmember Diana Ayala, will require the New York City Department of Mental Health of, of Health and Mental Hygiene to conduct neighborhood-specific public awareness and education campaigns regarding the city's farm-to-city projects with the goal of improving public education about such projects. And then proposed introduction number 1652A, sponsored by Councilmember Alika Ampri-Samuel, would define 
community gardens and prohibit the New York City Department of Planning from classifying community gardens as vacant lots. And I want to thank the staff that worked on these two bills, Alex Polinoff, Nadia Johnson, Emily Forgione, and Andrea Vasquez. The next bill is a public safety bill and its introduction number 1847, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, and it will amend the responsibilities for the New York City Office for Hate Crime Prevention to now require an individualized response to all violent hate crimes. I'm proud of our efforts to pass this quickly, and it's an example of the council's unity and the city's unity against hate crimes. And I want to thank from the staff Daniel Addis and Agatha Marvropoulos uh, for their work on that bill. And today the council will vote on a very important bill related to Title IX, aimed at expanding reporting on sex and gender-based discrimination and harassment. Introduction 1536A, sponsored by Councilmember Helen Rosenthal, relates to reporting on efforts to prevent and address sex and gender-based discrimination and harassment, including the experiences of transgender, intersex, gender non-conforming, and non-binary individuals. And I want to thank from the staff, Brenda McKinney, uh, Jar Jarasi uh, Ganapathy, I apologize if I didn't mis if I mispronounce your name, Smita Deshmukh, Andrea Vasquez, and Chloe Rivera. Finally, the council will vote on a piece of cultural affairs legislation, proposed introduction number 1451A, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera, will require the creation of a task force to evaluate the feasibility of creating a museum about New York City's African American civil rights history. And I want to thank from the staff, Brenda McKinney, Christy Dwyer, Smita Deshmukh, and Andrea Vasquez. That is today's agenda, and I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. <clears throat> we will now move into discussion of general orders, beginning with Council Members Cabrera, Cornegie, and Chin. Thank you so much. Uh, today, in the last week of Black History Month, we will vote on intro 1451A, which creates a task force to consider the creation of a museum of New York City African American civil rights history. There is an own toll civil rights movement story that needs to be told, not just for us, but for our children, grandchildren, and all generations to come, regardless of nationality. The risks and personal sacrifices made by African-American New Yorkers are a guidepost and inspiration for standing up for justice. Many were part of the great migration from the South and had first-hand experience with lynchings, legally sanctioned sexual violence, theft of, prop of property, racial profiling, chain gangs, night riders, and all the matters and all manner of domestic terrorism supported even by local authorities. While New York City is rich in museum, there is none, let me say that again, there is none that deals with this history. This, this is a groundbreaking legislation that will bring light to these unsung heroes and raise our commitment to civil rights, equality, and diversity to an even a higher level. I want to personally thank our speaker, Corey Johnson, Cultural Affairs Committee Chair Van Bramer, and Majority Leader Lori Combo for your advocacy, for your help and support of Intro 1451A. I also want to thank the Cultural Affairs staff, uh, committee staff, Brenda McKinney and Christy Dwyer, and my legislative director, Claire McLevain, for th their work on this bill. I'm looking forward to the recommendations from the task force of experts. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Cabrera. Madam Majority leadership. Leader, I, I forgot to mention two things that I, I need to mention. Number one, I was remiss. We have another wonderful member of the staff here that is leaving, mm -hmm. and I want to uh, say that we are really going to miss uh, Ben Smith from the Office of the General Counsel, who has been a fantastic mm -hmm. person to work with. He has been a great lawyer here. He has worked on a lot of the important things that we've dealt with, and so I want to give a round of applause to Ben Smith for his service. Uh,
And the other thing that I forgot to mention, Madam Majority Leader, is that we are also voting on two nominations to the Conflicts of Interest Board today. Uh, Chair Kozlowitz uh, chaired a hearing the other day and then the vote this morning. Those two nominees are Wayne Hawley, who used to be the general counsel at the Conflict of Interest Board, and Nisha Agarwal, who has served this city for many years. Uh, we, are voting on, we are voting on both of those nominations as part of our advice and consent responsibility on COIB nominees today here at the council. And I want to thank Chair Kozlowitz for her work in chairing that hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. And now we will hear from Council Member Cornegy. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. Our 2020 New York City Energy Conservation Code sends an important message. Our city will lead on sustainability, our city will lead on energy conservation, and our city will lead on preserving our planet. When we pass the Energy Conservation Code today, we mark a significant advance in taking advantage of new technologies and strategies to pursue sustainability. We'll all benefit when we create and upgrade our standards for energy conservation and energy efficiency and sustainability. Today would not be possible without the work of colleagues in government, advocates, and those forward-thinking private sector institutions who recognize the challenge of climate change is not a tomorrow problem. The challenge of climate change is a today, here and now problem. The expertise and insight of all the partners who participated in making this 2020 Energy Conservation Code possible are critical to overcoming that present day challenge. Their expertise guides us towards taking advantage of innovations we have at present and pressing to pursue the even more innovative technologies of tomorrow. Thanks to the speaker, my colleagues, Mayor de Blasio, our partners across the administration and at the Department of Buildings, and all the experts and advocates who make today's vote possible. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Carnegie. We'll now hear from Councilmember Chen. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I also first wanted to welcome my seniors from uh, Chinese American Planning Council Project Open Door. Yeah. Today, the council will vote on the Gold Broom Development Project in my district. This project will bring to the Lower East Side desperately needed affordable senior housing a permanent home for the Chinese American Planning Council and a dedicated space to preserve the legacy and services of the Beth Hamatraj Hagodo, a synagogue that served the Low East Side community for over 120 years until the tragic fire in 2017. This is a site that so many Low East Side residents feel connected to in different ways. Throughout this process, we have heard from residents who share feedbacks and emphasize the need to deepen affordability and secure traffic mitigation. As a result, I'm proud that we were able to secure 488 residential units at an average of 53% of the area median income. 208 units, or 43%, will be permanently affordable. By the end of this process, I'm proud to say that we secure deeper affordability by lowering the average AMI and creating affordable, additional affordable senior housing. And I'm also proud that 30% set aside for formerly homeless seniors and families. Not only will formerly homeless families have a chance to move in, we are fighting to give former tenants in the Seward Park Urban Renewal area a chance to return to the community where they were raised. This site will also be a permanent home for the Chinese American Planning Council, a community-based organization that has been serving working class and immigrant New Yorkers for over 55 years and will now be able to expand their services for senior immigrants, people with special needs, and our youth. And rising above the ashes of the fire will be the Beth Hamatraj Hagoda Jewish Congregation and Cultural Heritage Center that will hold classes and lecture and regular synagogue services. Those running the project, just like any construction project, will work with us a partner in mitigating traffic congestion, especially in the narrow, already congested Low East Side Street. And we will continue to actively engage agency on next step to implement traffic mitigation and study traffic pattern that will relate to construction and activate pedestrian-friendly improvement. 
you know, today's vote is Thank an you, important Council step Chen. forward. Um, creating desperately needed affordable housing, senior housing, and preserving the legacy of these two important institutions. And I wanted to thank our land use staff, especially Raju and, and Chelsea, for their work and their support, my staff, Gigi Lee and Anthony Drummond. And I personally also want to thank our chair, Chair Moyer, for chairing such a long hearing. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you to all the supporters who came out. And I ask my colleague for your strong support. Thank you. And thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for giving me the extra time. <laughs> thank you, Councilmember Chin, for taking additional time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and we should all have a cheering squad like you, Councilmember Chin. Um, congratulations. And we will now move on to the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations, Intro 1451A, Museum Task Force. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Economic Development, Intro 1652A, Community Gardens. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1654A, Farm to City Projects. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 245B, Tax Liens. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1258, Transparency Reso. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M225 and Reso 1261 through pre-considered M228 and Reso 1264 various budget documents. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1816A, Energy Code. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 606 and Reso 1265 through LU 608 and Reso 1267, Broom Street. Coupled on general orders. LU 609 and Reso 1268, 503 Broadway. Coupled on general orders. LU 610 and Reso 1269, Bridge Park South. Coupled on general orders. LU 614, Avenue O, Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 190D of the New York City Charter. LU 615 and Reso 1270, Primary School. Coupled to general orders. LU 624 and Reso 1271, Bluestone Lane. Coupled uh, to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. LU 625 and Reso 1272, Sidewalk Cafe. Coupled to general orders. LU 636 and Reso 1273, Baychester Avenue Rezoning. Coupled to be filed pursuant to letter of withdrawal. Report of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations, Intro 1440A, Agency Compliance Application. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 1847A, Hate Crimes. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, M17 and Reso 1274, approving the appointment of Nisha Agarwal, Conflicts of Interest Board. Coupled on general orders. M218 and Reso 1275, approving the appointment of Wayne Hawley, Conflicts of Interest Board. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Women and Gender Equity, Intro 1536A, Annual Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 614 and Reso 1276 Avenue O rezoning. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Coupled on general orders at this time, mass and roll call vote on all the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Congratulations to all of my colleagues passing legislation today. I vote aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you for this opportunity and thank you Speaker Johnson for your leadership focusing on food equity in New York City. Today, community gardens are classified as vacant land and not as open space and outdoor recreation as they should be. The changing of how community gardens are designated in city planning databases will hopefully prohibit officials from inappropriately reviewing land for potential development. Studies show that in our communities, we are already in desperate need for access to green space and access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And 1652 will address both those needs in its own small but mighty way. When addressing and fighting against overdevelopment in low-income communities, now we can plan ahead in a meaningful way, knowing that our community gardens will be protected by exclusion from the city planning list. We already don't have much space, as already indicated, so we need to protect what we have. And so I'm proud of Bill 
1652. And again, I thank the speaker for his leadership and seeing the need and importance um, to have access to fresh fruits and vegetables and doing that by protecting our small community gardens. So thank you again. And I just hope that everyone sees the benefit of this bill. Thank you so much. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ayala. Aye on all. Borelli. Aye on all. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Congratulations to all my colleagues on passing important legislation. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Cornegie. Uh, definitely aye on my bill, and I guess aye on the rest. <laughs> Deutsch. Aye on all. Diaz. Aye on all. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Congratulations to all of our colleagues passing important legislation today. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jonai. Aye on all. Gordenchik. Holden. Aye on all. Kalos. Aye on all. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye on all. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Levin. Um, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Uh, I just want to um, say congratulations to my colleagues uh, on the legislation that they are passing today. I want to especially acknowledge Councilmember Lander and um, Families for Safe Streets uh, for the immense amount of work that they have done uh, on this legislation today. And, um, and hopefully this will be saving lives in the future. So with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Aye on all. Lewis. Aye on all. Mizell. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Powers. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye on all. Salamanca. Aye on all. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. I want to, of course, commend and thank all my colleagues for their legislation today and also just uh, bring to attention a bill, uh, Introduction 1847, my bill that es helps establish communication protocols in terms of hate crimes. I, I thank my council colleagues who were very instrumental in establishing the Office of Hate Crimes Prevention within the Mayor's Office. We're adding to this by now requiring communication protocols when hate crimes occur. We are now codifying that within 24 hours of a confirmation of a hate crime by the NYPD, that officials will be notified, communities will be notified. Not everyone follows tweets. Not everyone follows a Facebook message. We need official communication when these serious hate crimes occur. We're also calling upon the administration to come up with a holistic plan to proactively address this very, very serious crisis. So I thank my colleagues. I want to thank Jeff Baker, the council staff, my staff, and the speaker for their support. And I vote aye. Thank you. Thank you. Valone. Aye and all. Van Bramer. Jaeger. I on all, with the exception of M225, M226, and accompanying resolutions 1261 and 1262. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Give us one moment as we count the tally.
The chamber will stand at ease. Van Bramer. I vote aye and all. <laughs> Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions. M225 plus 226 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, one negative, and zero abstentions. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We'll now move into the discussion of resolutions. I'll now read today's resolutions into the record. Members who wish to vote against or abstain on either of today's resolutions should register your vote with the clerk at the dais. Resolution 335A, an amended resolution calling upon the New York State Legislature to pass and fully fund and the governor to sign A6493, S2281, legislation that would establish eight demonstration programs throughout New York State and one coordinating center to improve the care of sickle cell disease patients and educate about sickle cell trait. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 980, Resolution declaring June 19th of each year Sickle Cell Awareness Day in the City of New York. All in favor say aye. aye. All opposed? Abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. We will begin with Council Member Adams, followed by Amprey Samuel, followed by Moya. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Please, we're having quiet in the chamber. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. On Saturday, November 30th, just after the Thanksgiving holiday, South Ozone Park and South Jamaica residents in my district woke up to a nightmare after the collapse of a sewer line that flooded their homes. Unfortunately, months later, their nightmare continues. Since November, we have spent holidays like Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's Day and Valentine's Day at home with our families. Our children and grandchildren, our nieces and nephews were able to enjoy midwinter recess at home. However, many residents in my district are still waiting to have appliances replaced, waiting for heat, waiting for reimbursement after losing their most precious belongings, and some are still waiting to get back into their homes. Some basements haven't even been touched, and I have no reports of anyone receiving a dime in compensation. We can and must do better as a city. I stand here today to say to my constituents, I am here for you, and I will continue to fight for you until your heat is restored, until your appliances are replaced, and your finances are reimbursed. 
I also stand here to ask my colleagues to lend support to my efforts to make this right for the residents of South Ozone Park and South Jamaica, and yes, even New York City, to address the failures that led us to this point so that it never, ever happens again. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Adams. Councilmember Amprey Samuel. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. And thank you for your leadership on intro 1894 that's being introduced today. Thank you. The Fair Shot Act. Following generations of little to no progress in combating discrimination in hiring, the Fair Shot Act will create a level playing field for job applicants. The Fair Shot Act will ensure automated employment tools are audited to assess predicted compliance with existing New York City anti-discrimination laws. It will require that audits be conducted on an annual basis, and it will provide notice to job applicants who are asked to submit to an automated assessment as part of a hiring process. There has been no reduction of discrimination against black job applicants in the quarter of a century and the results are hardly better for Latinx applicants. This should absolutely be horrifying to the city, especially one that touts its diversity as among its greatest assets. The Fair Shot Act is intended to meaningfully build on the city's work to eliminate bias from how companies hire and how they make use of pre-hire assessments. Job applicants deserve the right to know that they are being evaluated and the fact that they are being evaluated without any bias. So I ask my colleagues to join us in supporting Bill Intro 1894 and just to be consistent with all of the other amazing pieces of legislation that came out of this body. So again, Majority Leader, I thank you for your leadership and um, here to be supportive. Thank you so much. And we'll now hear from Councilmember Moya, followed by Gibson. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, New York is famous the world over for our food. Uh, there's Chinese, Italian, Ecuadorian, Greek, you name it, I guarantee you there's a restaurant that's serving it, uh, at least for now. Uh, right now, restaurants across the city and across the country are at the mercy of third-party food delivery services like Grubhub and Uber Eats. Uh, they're stuck in a catch-22. They, they need these food delivery apps to reach customers and stay in business, but at the same time, it's these delivery services that are threatening the survival of our local restaurants. Apps like Seamless are charging restaurants as much as 30% for orders, which can exceed the restaurant's profit margin in some cases. On top of that, delivery services prohibit restaurants from using different pricing on the app to account for those service fees. In some cases, apps are even charging restaurant fees even when users don't submit an order. They do this, uh, they do this with, with call fees, charging restaurants when a user calls an establishment through the app, even if the call doesn't result in an order. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Council Member Jonai uh, for being a leader on this issue and partnering with me uh, on this intro of packages of bills that are designed uh, to give restaurants a fighting chance. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and thank you, Speaker, for uh, the time. Thank you. Council Member Gibson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, and good afternoon, colleagues. Um, I am so honored and privileged um, to thank the members of the New York City Council Women's Caucus. Earlier this afternoon, we had a vote, uh, and there was an overwhelming vote of new co-chairs, and I, along with Councilmember Farrah Lewis, are your new Women's Caucus co-chairs. And we are excited to get to work, and certainly we want to thank our outgoing co-chairs, the amazing Councilmember Margaret Chin and Councilmember Carlina Rivera. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for your service, for your commitment, for your relentless efforts throughout your tenure to always be a powerful voice for women and children across New York City. It has been an honor working under your leadership. You both have given us a lot of work to do and we have big footprints to fill, uh, but I truly believe that as new women's co-chairs, we're going to obviously continue a lot of the great work and really make sure that every young girl across the city of New York understands that they can look at us and see themselves. And I appreciate your commitment, your passion, your dedication, 
all of the events, the forums, the legislative uh, town halls, budget priorities, everything that we've done has always been in the spirit of a collaboration because we represent so many residents in our communities that are looking up to us and I look forward to working with the entire city council on behalf of the Women's Caucus. I thank you ladies for the honor and privilege and I look forward to serving all of you. Thank you so much Madam Majority Leader. Thank you and just want to close recognizing during this Black History Month as it was brought up at the uh, council event that we lost several giants at this time as well, including model, entrepreneur, actress, restauranteur B. Smith, uh, Barbara Lane Smith. She will be forever remembered and continue to inspire generations of women entrepreneurs. I also want to recognize Katherine Johnson, who died at the age of 101. Uh, Worked for NASA, many of you may know her as the powerful woman um, featured in the film uh, Hidden Figures, and she played an instrumental role um, in our first American space flight. And she will also be remembered. And on February 24th, uh, in California, there was the recognition of the loss of Kobe Bryant and Gianna Bryant, as well as the other seven members who also died in the tragic helicopter accident. And at the same time, I also want to recognize their powerful work that they have done, but I also want to switch gears completely and just talk about a piece of legislation that I'm also introducing as the majority leader mom. Um, I'm supportive of eight, intro 1893, requiring child toilet seats and to be built in buildings of certain occupancy codes, including but not limited to educational centers, theaters, amusement parks, libraries, hospitals, and many other spaces, cultural centers where our children continue to live, learn, and grow. Public bathrooms are not child friendly and this legislation will bridge the gap. Parents and children across New York City do deserve to feel comfortable needing to stop at a restroom while they are out and about. And I can say firsthand that potty training is a challenge in public spaces and I look forward to my colleagues' support. Thank you so much. This meeting is now adjourned and we will Hear from closing remarks from Speaker Corey Johnson. I believe Councilmember Grudenchik wanted to make some brief remarks. I just want to uh, remind everybody as we close Black History Month that next week on March 5th will be the 250th anniversary of the Boston Massacre. And while it didn't take place here in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, those of us who remember our American history know that the first person to die in the cause of freedom and liberty here was a man named Crispus Attucks. He was a person of color. And so it's good that we remember him this day in the New York City Council um, that he gave his life that we may meet here today in peace and freedom. Thank you, Crispus. Thank you so much. Uh, this stated meeting at February 27th, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson.